Welcome to the Steering Change Podcast, navigating through the commercial transportation industry in Alberta and beyond. Powered by the Alberta Motor Transport Association. Here's your host, Josh Hanaberry. Friends in the industry, I'm your host, Josh Hanaberry, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of the Steering Change Podcast. In a recent episode, we had 2023 Safety Person of the Year, Marina Rowland, join us to discuss what goes into creating a thriving safety culture in the workplace. Some of the critical components we discussed were focused on what employers can do to be compliant with legislation and best practices they can consider when enhancing their safety culture. Another critical component employers need to consider when creating a thriving safety culture is the recruitment of new staff, how to empower their employees to operate safely from the moment they start working for their organization, what goes into an effective onboarding process, as well as what employers can do to retain staff. In today's episode, I'm excited as we speak with a good friend of mine, BJ Zubkoff, Talent Acquisition Manager with XTL Transport, and Rob Dombowski, Advisor, Safety, HR, and Labor with AMTA, as we dive into the recruiting and retention and what employers and their staff can do to keep safety as the top priority each and every day. All right, BJ, Rob, welcome. Super excited to have you both on the Steering Change podcast. I think today's going to be a phenomenal conversation, so it's just really good to have you both here. Perfect. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Absolutely. So, BJ, to start us off, can you share a little bit about yourself as well as your role at XTL Transport? Uh, Yeah. So, my name is BJ. I'm the Talent Acquisition Manager at XTL Transport, which is just one division of the XTL group of companies. We're a cross-Canada company specializing in warehousing, transportation, and distribution. We're also a steadily growing company. In fact, we are actually getting close to opening our biggest facility across the country. I'm right here in Balzac, which is set to open in a few months. April, I believe, is what I'm hearing. So I've been with XTL for over seven years. I've held such roles as planner, HR, HR and safety. I'm the former safety manager and now I'm the talent acquisition manager. Um, I've been in the industry for about 23 years, and I absolutely love it. Um, There's not a more important industry in my eyes than the transportation industry. I mean, if it wasn't for truckers, us humans would not have the essentials that we need to survive. No two days are the same. There's always work. And it feels good knowing that I'm there behind the scenes helping get bodies in the trucks, delivering freight all over Canada and the U.S. And I couldn't be prouder to be working for a company as amazing as XTL and finding that career that we've been searching for. I'm also a single mom to an amazing 20-year-old university student whose name is Katie. She has been my biggest supporter in my transport industry journey from coming to work with her mama when she was younger because mom had to work long hours to being there on my worst days to lean on. She's always been my biggest cheerleader and supporter, and I'm so honored to be her mama. So It's amazing. (laughs) Tough to follow. Tough to follow. (laughs) I love the fact that you can highlight the the pride and joy of being a parent thing that's critical just in our identity and who we are. And the uh, yeah, it's super good to have you here. I know we're going to have a really good conversation, so I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me here. It's it's an honor to be associated with the AMTA and to work with people like you guys. So appreciate that. All right, Rob, my friend, I'm sure a little bit about yourself as well as your role here at AMTA. Okay, so my name is Rob. Uh, I'm an industry advisor in HR and safety with the AMTA been here for a couple of years, a little longer than that. I actually began HR back in the 90s when I was in the military, uh, going out with the recruiting sergeant, the recruiting officer, helping to to get some troops to come and join the military with us. And then uh, I would do some training as well, oversee that. And as my career progressed, I did some recruiting in teachers. And then I went overseas and ended up in uh, Asia for a while. And when I came back, I took on some health and safety roles. Uh, and HR roles with some construction companies and manufacturing in Alberta. I had to hire drivers. I had to manage safety. I had to deal with the drivers on their good days, on their bad days. So I learned a lot about it. Along the way, I got my class one, which I think really would help me to understand the job and the industry much more. So when I'm recruiting drivers or I'm talking about recruiting drivers, I'm doing that with firsthand knowledge of how that works. And it really helps me to provide our members uh, with a perspective that is knowledgeable and practical. It's awesome, man. Good to have you here. And so, Rob, I'm going to celebrate you for a second, and then I'm going to, of course, bring it back to BJ because we want to celebrate her too. But when I first started, actually, even prior to my time I'm working at AMTA, I had the the opportunity to meet Rob, actually, one of our regional meetings. And first off, um, just because I'm not tall, Rob is very tall. So that stood out right away, and I was just like, oh, snap, this guy is a beast. And his ability, honestly, to help people is 
especially in a topic when you're talking HR, safety, best practices, labor, the differences between employer types, all of this, to me, it was all of this stuff where you're like, how am I supposed to know all this? And then you're introduced to a guy that actually knows it all. He's lived it and he can talk about it in a number of ways. Um, I just want to celebrate you, my friend, and just the impact I know that you're having in my career as well as in our industry and with carriers throughout our province and um, professional drivers. It's, it's phenomenal watching this your journey, being part of it. And I just wanted to celebrate you as well as BJ. When I first actually connected with BJ, it was even before I worked at the association. And we've built a really good friendship over the last year and a half or so. And something that really stands out, and you'll get to really hear it throughout our conversation, is the passion that she has for our industry. And I think you're probably top two, if not the most passionate person when it comes to professional drivers and really understanding the impacts that they're having, just not on our like our industry. We're think I think sometimes it's that's kind of where it stays, but our society as a whole. And I love I'm not gonna steal her thunder when it comes to her her breakdown of the importance of professional drivers. I'll let her share that. But just yeah, your passion is phenomenal. You're so relatable. You're so good at building relationships with people. And for us, it's really encouraging too, because we want people that, to feel comfortable, to be passionate and know what they're advocating for really does matter. So the relationship that you have with AMTA, with many of our team members, it's also really nice for us to celebrate because again, it, it, it's what we need. We need industry working together and you're a great voice for our industry. And just yeah, knowing that you've had a, a really good career in your industry and I'm a big advocate for XTL. It's awesome to see their growth and just knowing that you're a key member of that growth, I think is also really awesome. And we're going to celebrate that today. So again, I just want to welcome you both on. Yeah, Thank you, thanks, sir. Josh. <clears throat> and I think actually you and I had our first like one-on-one -on -one conversation at like one of the best events of the year because we rode at Strathmore at Driver Appreciation, right? And we had to run back in. So that kind of gave us that little bit of time for you and I to connect. And it's just been, it's been amazing right from there. Like, I don't think I can, I don't know. I can't, uh, I can't, I, there's no, I don't have enough words to explain how appreciative I am for all of you at the AMTA. I mean, Without you guys, we don't have a voice, right? And if we're behind you guys, we're there to make your voice louder. So I definitely encourage people to definitely get involved. So for sure. So should we jump into our topic here, Josh? Actually, I guess before we jump into that, Josh, I wanted to just talk about BJ and our upcoming annual conference. Uh, BJ, you're going to be speaking at our, our conference on the diversity panel. I am. So I'm super should, excited. Yeah, that should provide a lot of a lot of value to our employers that are members and I think we're going to put our link to the annual conference in the notes, so you should be able to see that there. And I encourage anybody that is listening that is interested to come and visit us at our annual conference in uh, Calgary this spring. So I wanted to actually jump into the topic that we're going to be talking about today. And uh, that's going to be recruiting and retention specifically. BJ, we want to know what you're doing as a talent acquisition manager at XTL. And then I'm going to just weigh in and just talk about recruiting and retention in more general terms that other carriers could probably leverage for their their operations absolutely we're all game for that so bj uh you know, walk us through some of the components you consider when preparing to post a position that you're going to be recruiting for what is the thought um, process well candidates want to know like that they want to know the basics how much money are they going to make where are they going how long are they going to be in the truck what kind of equipment they're going to be hauling one thing XTL offers is a great work-life balance, and that's what people look for too, right, is they want that work-life balance, they want to drive newer equipment, and they want to know what kind of benefits that companies are offering them, right? So, I mean, some of the benefits of working with us is you're driving newer internationals, they're getting cycled out every 800,000 miles, we have a 100% company paid benefit program where we pay the premiums, you know, there's an RSP matching program, the drivers want to know what they're going to be making week by week. So we try to highlight that. We give 2% raises every year for the first five years. You know, we give them a schedule. So when you're working with the Costco division, you get a five-day schedule. That's your schedule for one year. When you're running US, I mean, they want to know where they're going, what kind of equipment they're having, where they're going to be hauling, what they're going to be hauling. So we try to highlight that anytime we're, we're posting ads. So just kind of looking at... You want to invite them in to work with you. You want to bring that culture in with you. You want to let them know that they're going to be treated with kindness. You know, that they're not going to be pushed past limitations or they're not going to have to, you know, risk their lives driving through really bad weather. You know, that we're, we're there to help them. We're there to make sure that wherever they go, they're coming home safely. So, I mean, safety is huge with XTL. 
one of the things that we instill with everybody is no load is more important than your safety. And we know in a heartbeat, things can change, right? So when you're interviewing people, not a lot of people come in with that safety kind of frame of mind. So you got to kind of help them understand why you want to be in that safety frame of mind, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does. That does. So a lot of the the focus, I guess you'd say, is really how do you brand your your positions? How do you sell the job through the job posting and and make that connection with the the drivers? And that's hugely important. I look at some of the job postings on Indeed, and I see guys have put in a, a posting and they've got maybe 300 words, and it doesn't tell you anything about the job that you're going to be doing. It just says come and drive a truck and make uh, crazy amounts of money, which yeah. might attract some people. But at the end of the day, you know you want to know what you're getting yourself into. But I was just talking to another carrier the other day, the importance of having a good job description. And then that translates into your job with the job posting. If you have a good job description, all the benefits, everything spelled out, all the, the requirements, the duties, the, the expectations, and you trim that down and you put it onto your, your job posting, uh, you're able to attract more drivers. Absolutely. But uh, I, I did want to ask you, how do you go out and find your drivers? Where do you go? Well, what I mean, we're, we're really lucky. We have, well, we use Indeed. We use a system called Jazz HR and it kind of posts on all job boards for us. But I mean, we're lucky. We don't really have to post ads all the time. We have people wanting, you know, coming to us all the time asking if we're hiring, which is good. And then the other thing that we find value in is we don't shut the door because we have that two year minimum requirement. If somebody calls in and they have only a year, I mean, I do everything I can to help them understand why we have that two years and help them like navigate where they can go and look for work. Right. So, I mean, our culture is huge here and that's, that's what a lot of people look for. Right. So when I get those people, I mean, the AMTA knows themselves because I always say, call the AMTA. I go in and I show them how to get to your job board. I show them where to go and look like, yeah, I mean, we just want to, we want to encourage people to stay. You want to encourage people to go. Maybe if they don't have that two years, maybe in two years, they'll come back to us, you know, once they get that required experience. So, yeah, uh, yeah the word of mouth, having people just knock on your door saying, hey, I heard about you guys. I want to I want to work with you. Uh, it's your employees, your people, your clients talking about how great you guys are. And that's yeah. hugely powerful. If you can get to that point, trim your, your recruiting budget uh, a lot because you don't need to pay as much to, to actually find people. I wanted to share a couple hear, things. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, and you hear all the time, well, we see your we see your equipment on the roads. It's always, you know, we hardly ever see you broken down or it's always looks brand new and it's always clean. And so, I mean, those are the things that people look for. So if you've got that nice, clean billboard out there, that helps as well, right? So Yeah, no, for sure. But I was thinking, you know, a lot of companies, they struggle to differentiate themselves on job boards or in the market. Uh, how do they go about doing that? I encourage these guys to go out and find creative ways to reach potential uh, populations that people are, are overlooking. So I always tell this story to, to people when we talk about recruiting, but I was dealing with hiring some positions and down in Southern Alberta, out in Tabor, we have a, a fairly large Mexican Mennonite population. They are great at fixing things. They're mechanically inclined. They can drive almost anything. They're great at construction. They're good at using their hands and they have those skills. What you don't do is find these guys uh, constantly uh, cruising LinkedIn or Indeed looking for jobs. Uh, go out, find them where they live, find them where they congregate, and post on the community bulletin boards. Talk to people in that community, and word of mouth will will bring those people to you eventually. Uh, I hired a lot of great hires out of that, uh, that population. The same principle applies in Calgary, Edmonton, wherever you live. There are going to be pockets and populations of people that are overlooked that just don't have the access to the internet or the computer skills or the the desire to go and use that. We need to be open to still taking paper and doing things the old fashioned way. And I find a lot of good talent uh, is overlooked that way. So I encourage carriers to, to consider that. And then in terms of dollars and cents, do you spend a lot of money per hire? Do you know what that, that cost would be? You don't have to tell us what it is, but do you know yeah, yeah, we kind of we look at that when we're bringing people on, right? So that's why yeah. we want to make sure that we get the right fit in that seat. And I think with being the safety person for the last six years over this, like oh, with XTL, it gives me kind of that advantage to look for that sa- the safest person to put in the seat, yeah. right? Because you want to make sure that when you're when you're sending people out there, I mean, you've got an you're you've got an image to uphold out there, right? So you want to make sure that you're putting the safest people most professional people in those seats to help maintain that image, right? 
Yeah. And that costs money. Uh, you can't recruit for free, can you? No. Right? I wish that's, we that's, could. <laughs> yeah. That's the point that I'm, I'm talking about or I wanted to, to make. If you're out there trying to spend uh, or hire on a free Indeed job board and not paying anything for it, you're going to really struggle. You need to spend a little bit of money. You need to look at your budgets and consider that. It's competitive out there. Last time I checked, there were over a thousand uh, jobs posted for class one drivers in Alberta on Indeed. And that's a hundred pages, if I'm not mistaken, of jobs. That's crazy. Right. And if you're not paying, you're down at the bottom of the, the 15th page, the 20th page. Nobody's going down there. So yeah. make sure that you're, you're, you're taking the right approach to getting your ads in front of people. It's interesting, again, being in a very different role in my past life, I was very involved when it would come to the, uh, the recruiting. And I wish I had some of this guidance even when we were trying to navigate because word of mouth was our, like I would say, our number one focus is who does our fleet know and do they meet the requirements that we set out as a carrier? But yeah, Rob, I think your point of like, don't be afraid to use paper. Like not everyone has the interest to even go combing the internet because job seekers, it can be pretty discouraging when you see a hundred postings and you're not getting anything back, but then all of a sudden you just happen to be at the right place at the right time and you talk to someone and now you have a career. It's like, okay, so I think, yeah, for employers and carriers specifically, specifically, it's really important to be creative. So I appreciate that. So now that we've recruited, now that you've hired, um, BJ, I'm going to start with you, but Rob, please feel free, of course, to keep adding just your perspective through experience, but you've hired a professional driver things are good. What are some best practices that you're doing to help their onboarding experience? First, you want them to be successful, but really buying into your company's safety culture. Well, treat them like humans. Get to know them. Find out where they've been, the experiences that they've had in the past. For instance, if a candidate tells me that they were pushed to drive on icy and unsafe roads, we explain that, you know, XTL's motto, no load is more important than their safety. Um, So much so that we implemented a weather policy which means they can stop on unsafe roads and no one's going to push them. We tell them about our equipment, which is all newer internationals, that gets cycled out on a regular basis and they're always under warranty. We tell them we're always making sure that they're ready for anything, like how we bring in the AMTA simulator every year right before winter, right? This helps them learn how to navigate in bad weather without being in the bad weather. But we try, we explain everything that we we feel is important to us as a safety conscious company most candidates, when they come in here, um, they come from those those areas where they don't have that safety conscious mind, right? So um, we really push that because we, like I said, no load is more important in your safety, and we know in a heartbeat things can change. That's awesome. The um, yeah, I think humanizing, remembering that we're hiring people is really important. And I had great success when we we're talking like really adapting and buying into a safety culture where when you can really include them from the beginning and in if part of it was driver mentorship but part of it was letting them know the impact they're having as a team like this is a collective effort it's not like there, there's a hierarchy in role sure but there's no hierarchy on the team we are all in it to serve our customers safely but yeah i completely agree no load is worth your life and when you have the ability to identify as a team member and to say yeah i'm part of something much bigger than just my specific job duties and knowing the detriments if i ended up in the ditch you i think you empower that confidence just just to let the dispatcher know hey this is not safe okay great what can we do instead and if it's parking the truck until the storm passes if it's waiting for a customer to move a bunch of pallets that are definitely in the way before you back up to a loading dock whatever it is but yeah i think out the gate you can really empower that rob what are you seeing and what advice would you share when first onboarding so that way yeah professional drivers are successful in buying into the safety culture i guess it starts with uh, the understanding that People see a safety culture, they follow the safety culture. If if everybody's talking about it and everybody's doing everything that they're supposed to be doing with it and leadership is talking about it, uh, they're going to buy into it. And that's one part of it. But, uh, you know, just in general, the onboarding process is critical. It's it's where the personal relationship is established. Imagine you went out on your first date and uh, it's bad. What are you going to do? You're going to give it a second go, maybe a third go? Probably not. Uh, And it's the same thing with an employer. If it's not working out in the first three months, you know, it's probably not going to work out and, and we need to resolve that. So go in with the, the premise that you want to build a relationship with your employees and make sure that safety is part of that relationship. Otherwise, it's not going to work out long term. We actually, yeah. Up. So we do the two days of in-class training and then we actually bring those candidates in to sit with our operations, maintenance and safety team and do like a kind of like a meet and greet to help them get to know the team. So that we're not just throwing them in a truck and being like, okay, now go 
go on your way and someone, you know, you'll meet them eventually down the road. But we want those people when they come in to feel comfortable. And you want to, I tell them all the time, instill that, that old school trucker mentality, right? Wave at each other, take care of each other. You know, if you see one of your XTL brothers or sisters park where they shouldn't be, call dispatch. Hey, I just, you know, this truck's parked where it shouldn't be. Is everybody okay? You know, take care of each other out on that road. Because I think that helps with the safety culture as well, knowing that they have those people out there to take care of them, to help them, right? Yeah. But I wanted to add to my original thought there. I started talking about Josh going on a date, right? But let's look at uh, onboarding is the first date, you know. Uh, and a former colleague of mine, uh, Scott Saylor, he's from Lethbridge, probably one of the most driven leaders I've ever seen, right? Right to the point and get it done. Uh, and him and his company have done amazing things. His direction to me when I was uh, doing HR for that company, it was memorable and powerful and it's true. Now think about it. When you retire after 40 years or 30 years with the company, what do they give you? They give you a watch and they give you some cake, right? Hey, good job, right? And he said, let's flip that script. I want them to go home at the end of the first day. We're going to give them the cake and they're going to eat it and they're going to go home and they're going to say, hey, that is the place I want to work with. That's where I want to be. I love that job. And they want that employee to go back and tell his family, his friends, how amazing the experience was. And that first day, that first week, that first month, if you can get that formula solved, you're going to do well with your employees. You're going to keep your employees. You're going to engage your employees. They're going to buy into what you're talking about when you talk about safety, when you talk about process, when you talk about the, the work that they have to do. But at the end of the day, make it a great experience for everybody, right? Easier said than done, but it's doable. In terms of safety, it's important to start with that. It's important to let the, the trainers know that they need to talk about safety and the leadership has to come and talk about safety. It's who covers it, who talks about it, what they say and how they say it is all important, right? It should not be the, the lowest person in the organization talking safety to the drivers. It needs to be leadership. It needs to be somebody with, with that level and that authority to talk about it. I'm just going to hit something that, that you shared and props to that leader. I think far too often that is missed. Far too often, it's go make me money and everything else is just a byproduct of that. And when I first entered transportation safety, which is in the specific role, is very different than health and safety. And my former director would often say, you have one shot to make a good first impression. So if that's the moment that someone's applying, that's the moment that they're onboarding or for me, the moment because I took care of our driver evaluations. The moment that not in the truck, not halfway out the terminal or the profit center is what we would call it. It's the moment you said hi to that human being, you had a chance to make a good impression. And you had a really, from a encouragement and a mentorship perspective, you had a really good chance to let them know what the priority is. And that was always them. And we would, again, we would often talk about the language like no loads worth your life and don't just walk on by that type of like kind of tagline language, but it was really true. And the other thing that I wanted to hit Rob that I believe if you give them the cake on the first day and you're the one from, from a collective leadership standpoint, reinforcing the importance of, staf- of safety and to tie it into your 30, 40 year career. A long time ago, I was introduced to a term like you have an opportunity to work on your legacy every day, what you're actually known for. And far too often people think, okay, when I'm retired or maybe when I'm dead, what are people going to say about me? It's like, okay, but what do people say about you when you leave a room? And I think as safety leaders and as HR leaders and as just people in our industry, if we were more conscious about what people said when you left a room. So as a professional driver, you left your customer shipping dock and you have your paperwork, your trailer's empty and you're rolling away. What are they saying? Are they saying, why can't there be more professionals like that guy or gal? Or are they saying, oh, I don't ever want to see that person again. But if we really focus on the legacy that you leave every moment, you enter a room, you leave a room, what are they saying? I think we would also continue to see this type of success that we're talking about right now. So yeah, Rob, I, I want to applaud your former leader. That was really key advice that he shared with you. Yeah, I think it made a big difference in, in retention in that period that we were there as well, right? Because that first step builds the relationship and the trust, okay? So <clears throat> I wanted to ask you, uh, BJ, because retention is obviously a huge concern for carriers, right? Uh, what piece of advice can you share on successfully retaining drivers at XDL Transport? Retention is all about making them feel like they are at home, Right getting to their level. Like I said, treat them like human beings. They're not just a body that gets in a truck to go and deliver freight to a store. They're actually humans. They're mothers, their fathers, their brothers, their sisters, their sons, their daughters. 
Um, and, and we always get to like a driver level. We understand where they're coming from, understand what they're going through, understand that they're away from their families for, you know, 9, 10, 16 hours a day, five days a week. Some of them are gone for 15, 20 days. You know, having those competitive rates, having the right equipment, having those lanes, promising that that work-life balance, but actually making sure that you're, what you're promising is actually what you're showing out there, right? Making sure that you know that, that they know that you're out there to watch out for their best interest. You're not just worried about them delivering that load, getting that POD so you can be paid. You know, make, and make them feel... Like I said, make them feel like they're part of a family. You know, we're we're huge on that here. And I, I always say that to them. You know, we're like a little family here. We need to take care of each other. We need to be here for each other. Um, because who else is going to watch out for you? You know, your family, right? So we instill that a lot. And then having, like I said, those competitive wages, giving them raises once in a while. You have those drivers that come in and they're like, oh, I worked for XYZ company five years and I never got, you know, three cent raise. I didn't get nothing or no bonuses or, you know, showcase what you want people to see about you as a carrier and then instill those things in your fleet, in your company. And that's going to help you retain those people. You know, if you're just constantly drive, 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 and no, there's no compensation, so to say, for it, then you're not going to you're not going to keep people you know what i mean making yeah. sure that if they call and say i don't feel safe on the road that you're not like oh but dude that really has to deliver tomorrow you know like is there anything you can do instead of just doing the oh yeah you know what you're not feeling safe pull over well you let me know when you're ready to go we'll let the customer know you know so i mean we we take pride in our culture we take pride in our company here and we we do everything that we can to make people feel like they're comfortable no, that's great you talk about a lot of the things that you need to do to be successful as an organization in retaining your people. Uh, I don't think you said it directly, but how do you have that communication? How do you talk to people uh, is important. And I'm sure that we've all heard uh, people don't quit the company. They quit their supervisor, right? So investing in the soft skills for your supervisors, your managers, your senior management, giving them the tools, the actual tools that they can use to talk to people and communicate effectively is important, right? Yeah. There's a, a, a huge correlation between uh, workplace success and these soft skills. Unfortunately, not a lot of training goes on for those soft skills. Too often we see that supervisor and manager is promoted because they're good at their job. This guy can dispatch like you couldn't believe, and he can get the job done, but he can't communicate with his employees. He can't manage the employers or she can't manage the employees because she doesn't understand how to communicate and oversee the work of others. Mechanics, same thing. Drivers, same thing. We promote people because they're good at being a mechanic or good at being a driver, but then we don't train them on how to give feedback to their subordinates. We don't train them on how to have a critical conversation. We don't train them in how to provide progressive discipline, right? And things go wrong. And this is where companies really struggle sometimes. And, you know, I was talking to one company and they showed me the stack of wrongful dismissals that they were dealing with, all the, the lawyer's paperwork. And I swear it was about 18 inches tall, right? And I'm just sitting there going, you know what? That doesn't have to happen, right? Uh, it shouldn't happen. In my career, I don't, well, I've never actually been been thrown under the bus with a wrongful dismissal claim. And I'm looking at BJ and I'm going to make an assumption that that stack is pretty small on your desk. It, it doesn't happen because you treat people right. And you guys are a huge company, right? That saves a lot of time, a lot of pain, and a lot of hassle. Makes your reputation better and keeps people longer. Absolutely. XTL invests in their in their team like we do, you know, with our management team and executive team. I mean, once a year we get together and do like a leadership training. Right. So, yeah. I mean, we if you don't invest in your people, you're not investing in yourself. You're not investing in your company because yeah. the people that are there, they're the ones that are making you who you are with your company. Right. So, yeah. That's true. Uh, the soft skills are hugely important in my mind. I wish every company would look at doing that for their people, at least a minimal amount for a new manager, new supervisor, because that makes all the difference. All Absolutely. the difference. Completely agreed. The The other thing that you said when we were talking about your relationship with, part of it was mechanics, part of it was with your, your equipment provider. So you're buying your power units off, you're buying your trailers off of two. And I think when you, you empower your professional drivers to be proud we're talking drivers specific right now but 
when you're empowering them to be proud of the equipment they're operating, I think they do take it to that next level where it's the old school trucker mentality. Of course, I'm proud of the truck I drive. Like I do know your fleet very well. And I know that it's in my, in my humble opinion, one of some of the best equipment out there. And when you have the relationship that you guys have collectively with your providers, you have that open dialogue. So when your drivers are sharing feedback, it's listened to. So then if it's going to the service manager, if it's going to the owner, whoever it's, that information is being shared with, and you're bringing it to your purchasing team that can then bring it to that dealer and say, look, we trust our fleet. This is what they're saying. Then the dealer actually has some responsibility now. And sometimes that could be like, well, I don't like the steering wheel position, or I don't like this on this function or this technology, wherever it is. But I do know that you have a really nice open line of communication when it comes to the equipment. And it also removes that barrier of fear. And I think a lot of times professional drivers are stuck with, do I do this trip even though I know that my truck is not safe because I need to put food on my own table? Or do I say something and do I, like, this has to get fixed before it's out on the road? There is that, it's a unnecessary, my opinion, this fear of repercussion when something's broken. It doesn't mean they broke it. It's just a piece. It, it wear, wears and tears and it broke. But again, building that relationship and having those soft skills to say, I want you to tell me at your pre-trip that you've noticed something was wrong. So that way you're not afraid to cross a scale or that way you're not afraid to drive in various weather because you have that ability just to communicate. And again, I just wanted to, to highlight that, but also I admire your relationship with your dealers and the open conversations that you have, just this is not working for my fleets or this is, or we don't use this tool, is this a necessity? No, take it off, we'll save some money, like whatever it is, but I, I really respect that relationship, just knowing a little bit about your guys' back end and the relationship there. But I think that's important, is having that ability just to empower drivers to say, if it's broken, tell me. And when you catch something before it's broken, tell me. So that way, again, you can get it fixed and you have safe equipment on the road. I think that's a big part of retention. We've, uh, sorry, we've in the past, we've had like, you know, technology is advancing as we grow, right? As we get older, I don't know how to explain it, but technology is is advancing every day, right? So if we have like the new lane departure systems that we have in the truck, we brought in the people to talk to the drivers about why that system is like that, right? So I think that's part of retention too, is when drivers don't understand why something is the way it is in a truck, bring those people in to, ex to explain it to them so that they do understand why these features are important, right? So we do that quite a bit. We do driver's meetings twice a year, um, and it's all about stuff like that, safety. It focuses more on safety, but then we have those, you know, with a new lane departure system. We just had that at our last meeting. So they came in and talked about it and why the system does what it does, and then the drivers understood more. I wanted to ask the next question for you here, uh, BJ. You know, your, your organization is obviously growing very fast, right? Uh, what do you hear the drivers saying to each other that keeps safety at the forefront when they're operating on the road? Um, well, I guess they love that we're a safety conscious company, taking pride in their safety by supplying them with newer equipment so you don't have to worry about breaking down on the road. And we have an incredible maintenance program. Having ongoing safety trainings, like I said earlier with the driver's meeting and having the AMTA simulator, we do that every year. We bring that simulator in, we have it for a couple of weeks, we run every driver through it so that they know that we're investing in them. They also know that they love being paid by the hour, so no rushing. They don't feel like they have to, you know, go through unsafe roads to get there, unsafe conditions. They don't have to feel pressured about getting the load delivered because there's nothing more important than a human life on the road, not only for the drivers, but we have to remember that drivers are driving, you know, they're driving big vehicles out there. Not everybody understands how semis work or how how they operate. So, I mean, these drivers have to be more aware of their surroundings and everything about them. So we do everything that we can to make sure that we have the technologies, that we have the means to help these guys understand the safety part of being a truck driver, right? I mean, they all come with the basics, but you have to know your equipment. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know, you know, how, how everything works. So I'll say it again, this AMTA simulator, that is one of the biggest things. I mean, I remember first being, when we first brought it in, I had guys tell them, oh, I've been driving for 30 years. I don't need to get in that simulator. I know how to drive. But when they get out, they're like, oh, I just learned something new today. And it was like, this is an amazing investment that you guys brought in for us, right? So doing those driver's meetings, having, you know, talking about safety, sending out, we send out regular messages with weather updates, reminding them that they don't have to drive in, in, you know, the amazing Alberta high winds or <laughs> bad roads, right? It makes them, it makes, it makes those drivers want to kind of adopt that safety culture, right? Yeah. So 
I feel that we do a lot to make sure we have posters up around the office about safety. Um, our safety team is really good. I mean, they monitor when we have bad weather, they'll monitor the driver's speed. If somebody's doing the speed limit, we know that there's bad roads. I mean, they'll get a message. Hey, you know, slow down, reduce your speed. Right. So that's, that's great. You know, I talked to a lot of carriers and they don't have, well, not every carrier has a, a, a strong safety program. A lot of carriers assume that National Safety Code is the safety program, but there's so much more to it. There's the occupational health and safety side. And it can be seen. I shouldn't say it can be. It can seem very expensive, right? To invest in having a person, having a bunch of people doing this work, and then taking the drivers, putting them into a classroom or into the shop to to talk to them for, for 15, 20 minutes, uh, starts to build up. But my counter argument to that, and tell me if you agree, if you're having these conversations and you're investing this time and, and energy in talking about this stuff, does it A, prevent accidents and incidents from happening? And does it B, retain your drivers because they're feeling safe and engaged and part of the system? And I would say that in many cases, uh, the, the benefits in dollars and cents far outweighs long term the immediate cost of actually doing this kind of investment in, in safety training. And what are your thoughts on that, BJ? I think it's valuable. I mean, we've we have like i don't have the exact statistics but we have actually talked about how you know drivers that have been through the simulator we don't they don't have as many accidents as someone who doesn't run through the simulator before winter right so i mean when it comes to dollars and cents nobody wants to have accidents out there and i've i've dealt with a few in my time right they're not uh they're not nice to deal with they're not they're it's a lot of people's time it's a lot of people's money and it's just things that you know if you're if you're on top of them, letting them know that they don't they don't have to drive through high winds, they don't have to drive in bad weather, that reduces all of those accidents. And you want to reduce that, right? Because yeah. I'll say it again. I mean, they're out there driving these vehicles. What's what's the minimum weight of a of a triaxle? You know, 100, 125,000 pounds truck trailer freight. So I mean, you're that's uh, that's not something you want to mess with out on the road. So I mean, you should be doing everything that you can to make sure that they're being safe out on that road, right? Because they're not only affecting their lives, but it's everybody around them, right? On the road, yeah. so. Yeah, well, I, had, I had another conversation with another carrier. They said, yeah, it's very expensive to invest in safety. And I said, well, how much do you spend on all the accidents that you have now? And they hummed and they hawed. And then another carrier that was part of the conversation says, we don't spend any money on accidents, right? We don't know what the return on investment is because we just don't have accidents. We know we're preventing things with worst case scenario. Uh, it could be far, far worse. So you want to always keep that in mind. What's the cost of not doing anything or doing the minimum versus spending the extra time and energy to to train your drivers? I think the um, the other really important thing too is as people and as professionals, we like constant learning. And it's awesome when your employer is going to say, I'm investing into you. And if that is just in technology, like obviously undergoing this ELD mandate over the last couple of years, hard push last year, where all of a sudden it was something that you had to think about. Now you really have to deal with, okay, well, let's train you to be comfortable with the tech, with the technology, or if it's situations of like, again, driver simulator, which I'm a huge fan of and huge shout out to producer Rob, who's also our senior instructor and Jim, who's our part of our driver development team. Great guys here at the association. But when you're as an employer, when you're investing into your people, yeah, there's going to be the odd person. I don't need that. I don't need that until, like you said, BJ, hey, I didn't actually know that. I did learn something today. So it's a, um, but yeah, that's really important. And the other thing that I wanted to highlight too is professional drivers want to be safe. They're in, they have goals in mind of making it to their customer, making it back safely. And when you have a team supporting them and you have a team of people saying, like, if it's you, BJ, sending a note out on the iPads or on your your tablet saying, we know the roads are bad. Drive with extra care. Pull over if you need to. Like Just that type of validation that, yes, you constantly matter. It's not just because I want to say it on a bright, sunny day. I think that's also really important. Before we end today, um, I think it's really important that we just celebrate first the advice and guidance that has been shared, as well as we always like to give the guests and obviously co-host Rob an opportunity to share something that we haven't talked about yet. So if it's keeping in mind our conversation. So before we did, um, or we do end BJ, was there any final words that you would like to share as well as, are you comfortable if our listeners, if there was questions that they wanted to ask you directly, if you shared your contact information, like your email address? 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, if anybody's, you know, looking for a position, they can go to their our website, xtl.com. They can reach out to me. My email is bj.zubkoff at xtl.com. Or they can call the Airdrie office, 403-948-4520, and just go to the recruitment line, which actually comes directly to me. So, yeah, I'm always here. And were there any final words of advice or guidance that you wanted to share or one, just be kind to your people out there too. And I'm going to say this because I want to make sure that I get this out there, but the AMTA is our voice for the industry. I mean, we, they need us behind them to make their voice louder. So if we're not getting behind them, I mean, who's going to be there to be the voice for the industry, right? So just get behind the AMTA, get involved. I mean, there's one event every year, driver appreciation, get out there and appreciate those drivers. I mean, they should be appreciated every day of the year not just one week of the year but we take pride in doing that week and you know get involved that's 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 it get involved <laughs> definitely agreed no that's awesome and again thank you so much um just your passion really came out your knowledge is again it's something that i really admire and i really appreciate our friendship so thank you for joining us today yeah and i appreciate you guys for allowing me to be a part of this today and for being Absolutely. a part of the agm in april i'm super excited for that so i think it's going to be an amazing event and Everybody better get their tickets before they're sold out, hey? Almost there. Totally agreed. Yeah, this is, we're recording on January 29th, and I know we're, we've are we surpassed 50%, and there's still a bunch in the queue, so it's really good. Perfect. So, awesome. All right, Rob, my friend, bring us home. Were there any okay. final words that you want to share? And as well, how do people get in contact with you and the team of WSS? Okay, well, first of all, you can just get in touch with us through uh, WSS at amta.ca. Or you can give us a call and our, our numbers is, uh, on the website. So I don't have it in front of me. And then uh, happy to answer any questions that you'd have about this subject or other subjects uh, related to HR safety, uh, National Safety Code, WCB, whatever it happens to be. Leaning on Rob, um, like I said, when we first started this conversation, I celebrate you, my friend. The part of it is your experience, but I think a big part of it is your care for people. And you're, you have a really keen ability to understand people quite quickly and then getting on the same level of them to understand the pain point and let's go create some solutions and just today i think you added a boatload of value that i really admire and i know bj really appreciate so um just thank you so much again for being here today my friend this has been really good and yeah bj as well thank you again and i'm sure there will be many more and we'll see everyone at conference i'm really excited to hear your um yeah this insights you'll share during your panel and it'll be really good. So thank you both again, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Yeah, thanks, thank guys. you very much. Have a good day. BJ, Rob, thank you so much for taking the time and joining us today on the Steering Change podcast. I really appreciate the insights that were shared in our conversation, specifically as we dove into the importance of a thought-out onboarding process that empowers new hires to be safety-focused. All right, Steering Change Podcast community, did you have a question that you would like answered on an upcoming episode of the Steering Change Podcast? We want to hear from you. So to submit your questions to the Steering Change mailbag, hit up our DMs on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram with the hashtag Steering Change, and your answer will be answered either live on an upcoming podcast or by one of our awesome subject matter experts here at AMTA. I also ask that you share this episode with those in your network that could benefit from what we discussed today and make sure that you subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform so you can be notified when future episodes are released. You can learn more about us and our mission by visiting www.amta.ca. Thank you for taking the time to listen and I hope you have a safe day. Thank you for listening to AMTA Steering Change Podcast. If you have questions or comments, please reach out to us on social media or visit amta.ca. The views expressed by guests of the Steering Change Podcast are their own and may not reflect the views of the AMTA, its hosts, or sponsors.